Hi everybody, my name is Sascha Knorr and I like to give you a kind of walkthrough of one of my demos for Sound Iron's Venus Symphonic Women Choir Library, which is called Altar of Venus. As you can see, I use Cubase 6.5 as my DAW on Windows 7, 64-bit, and Vienna Ensemble Pro 4 as my instrument host. So, let's start with the beginning of the piece. When I open single or multiple MIDI tracks, we will hear just the notes that are played by those parts. You can hear the choir beginning to sing a low G, followed by a long glissando, which ends one octave above. A whisper cluster effect comes in. And finally we have our main motif. Let's take a closer look at this. As an aside, I want to point out that you hear those samples through some kind of processing. There's a little bit of EQ going on and I also have attached my reverb device. As you can see in contact, I only use the stage mics offered in Venus. And while we're on it, I'd like to show you the controls that are responsible for the quite fluid and natural sound of our main phrase that you've just heard. Those are the speed control and the legato volume control. The speed knob stretches or shortens the length of a legato transition, while the legato volume control adjusts the volume of a transition. Of course, we also have the swell knob for the general volume of the patch, but the most important are really those two guys over here. If we set them back to preset value by holding down control and clicking on them, and playing our phrase, we will hear something like this. You can hear it sounds a bit quieter, which is because we lowered the legato transition volume, but more important, the phrase loses its natural fluidity. And that's really because the speed of a legato transition is not appropriate for this kind of phrase. So let's go back to contact and lower the speed. Um, that approach may come across a bit paradoxical because we use a fairly low legato tempo for a quite fast phrase in this example. Sounds much better now, doesn't it? And that's really because of the natural behavior of singers that we are all familiarized with. In faster legato phrases like this, they tend to sing across the whole line and not every single note. So I, for example, would do something like this. Instead of... So I hope you get the idea. And if we now raise our legato volume back, uh, our phrase sounds right again. I know you can't hear this phrase anymore, but there's one more aspect I would like to cover. Because of the long legato transition, we have a serious time delay uh, in our playback. So if I set up the notes on the grid and turn on my metronome, you will hear that it's totally out of time. So, because of this, we have to put the notes off the grid to compensate the time delay. The leaving inaccuracy is only some kind of humanization, so uh, those phrases are not intended to be exactly in time. You might come up with the idea to use the MIDI pre-delay functions that are offered in many sequences to achieve that, but uh, the problem with this is that you still have your starting note which has no legato transition and it would be obviously delayed too much by a general function, so you have to do this manually. So, before you become too tired of the exposition, let's take a look at the second phrase. 
Uh, please ignore the different colors and lengths of the nodes uh, here. The colors in Cubase represent different velocities, but as the volume is completely controlled by the modulation data you can see uh, below in the controller lane, this has absolutely no impact on the nodes. Mm -hmm. You can hear the second voice coming in and now I would like to show you the complete vocal part of this section with the high sopranos above. Mm -hmm. As you've probably noticed, I've panned the different voices a bit across the stereo field. This might not be necessary with a library like this because we have a choir recorded in a real hall in stereo, um, but it helps, especially if you use more than one voice, um, it helps to separate them inside the mix. This applies also to the next section where I use the staccato samples. You can see the key switches for the syllables over here. I used key switch patches for this demo because at the time I did it, the very nice and handy builders were not available. So today you can use both uh, the key switch patch and also the very nice staccato mercato builder uh, to do phrases like this. Um, also here, please ignore colorization and length of the notes. In contact you can see I've raised the release knob to maximum, so the samples will be played completely no matter how long the MIDI notes are. Also the general volume is controlled with the swell knob. You also have a dynamics control here which adjusts the influence of velocity to the note volume, but as you can hear in this example, with my settings the difference is not that big. So this staccato section consists of three different voices. Uh, let's begin with the two main parts. The first one hits the downbeats and the second is a kind of answer to that phrase. By the way, the syllables I chose for this part don't follow a kind of language or logical order. Uh, they are really just some gibberish that sounds appropriate for this piece, at least for me. I'm also quite happy that we finally got some really mezzo piano or piano uh, choir staccato samples because what you usually hear when using choir staccatos is something like this. This is very appropriate for louder or epic stuff but the quieter samples really do a good job in intimate and mysterious pieces like this. Finally, I'd like to show you the intermediate part of this section, which is the choir just singing an M. Um. This part really connected our two main voices and filled some gaps in the whole phrase. And with this staccato basis, let's move on to our high sopranos. Their line is continued inside this section. At this point I also would like to introduce to you the accompanying instruments of the piece. 
I've decided to limit my sound palette quite drastically by choosing only sound iron samples to do the instrumental part of the demo. So let me show you what's playing here. We have the circle bells with some arpeggios, um, some piano chords from the far samples of the Montclarian piano, and finally a patch from the lakeside organ which does some really steamy bass notes in this section. Now, this organ notes lead to the last long phrase of our piece, which begins with a little intermezzo, which is a progression of our main motif, first sung in octaves and then with two additional voices. And this leads us directly to the sweeping final section up to the climax of the piece. It starts with an M vowel which then slowly blends into the U and O. The voices themselves are laid out in parallel thirds or sixths and most of the time with a slower part below them. The vowel blending in this section is done in two ways. First I've used the single M patch which I've already loaded and uh, for the second part I used an UO two-way uh, legato sustain patch. In my expression controller line you can see what I've done here. The higher the value the more U uh, you can hear and the lower the more the O sample is played. So what's the reason for the blending of U and O in this special case where we have extremely high notes? You might know that especially sopranos tend to uniform the sound of vowels uh, the higher they get in the register. So often it's really difficult to distinguish between an A, O, U or whatever vowel on a very high note. And because of this we don't hear the change of the vowel in this case, but we hear a little bit change of timbre which is quite intended because the high U sound uh, really disappears in a chord like this. When played solo it's quite okay, but it's not powerful enough to come across uh, the whole mix of this section. So I decided to change the vowel to O, which is much stronger in this high register, and we get this result. On this last note you can also hear the impact of the modulation control which blends between the velocity layers and gives you very good dynamic control over the sustains. Another aspect of those three chords here is the general usage of legato transitions. The legato in Venus very much sounds like a short string portamento, so especially in slower parts like this we should not use the legato transition between every note. So it's really important to figure out when to use it and when not. So between the first and the second chord I really wanted to point out the legato transition and create a lush glissando 
but then the second and third chord are disconnected except the one inner voice which keeps its legato transition. And now after that dramatic climax, I wanted to recall the atmosphere of the beginning of the piece by creating a little mysterious epilogue, played by our piano, organ and bells, together with a smooth G minor chord of the choir. So, here we are at the end of our video walkthrough. I hope you had fun watching it and maybe found some useful information. It was a big pleasure talking to you. So goodbye and enjoy Venus!